Well, welcome back to Truth Worth Living, where we seek to understand God's Word so we can live in the center of God's will. We've been studying the book of Hebrews, and all along the writer has been warning these vacillating Jewish believers about the foolishness of walking away from their faith. They've been thinking about abandoning the new covenant, which was established in Christ, and returning to the old covenant, which was established by law. It would be as silly as trading your iPhone 15 in for an iPhone 4, but much more serious. And there's really no reason to even consider it. Now, in the passage we're going to read today, he makes another effort to establish the superiority of the new covenant by comparing the mountain of God in the old covenant, which was Mount Sinai, to the mountain of God in the new covenant, which is Mount Zion. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12, beginning in verse 18. He says, You have not come to a mountain that can be touched, and that is burning with fire, to darkness and gloom and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that those heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them, because they could not bear what it commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I'm trembling with fear, but you have come to a mount, Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You've come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Now, Mount Sinai was the place of God's revelation to the generation of the Exodus because it was the place where God presented to Moses the Ten Commandments. Mount Sinai was a real place and a holy place. It was holy because of God's presence, and therefore it could not be touched by the people. Now, in Deuteronomy 9.19, Moses went to have a meeting with God in response to the episode of the idolatry with the golden calf. Do you remember that story? Moses left for 40 days to spend time with God on Mount Sinai where he was given the Ten Commandments. While he was gone, the people went a little bit nuts and insisted that the associate pastor and worship leader, who was Moses' brother Aaron, make for them a golden calf, a God that they could see and touch. Well, when Moses came down the mountain and saw them worshiping the golden calf, he literally flipped his lid. He threw the Ten Commandments and broke them. He ground that calf into powder, poured it in their water bottles, and made them drink it as a sign of their guilt. What was a god they could see became something they could pass. He hoped it was a lesson they wouldn't soon forget. Now, because of his meltdown, Moses had to go back up on that mountain to get another copy of the Ten Commandments. That was when he trembled with fear. He was afraid that God, in his holiness, would destroy them in their rebellion. Now, hoping that they would make the connection, the writer wanted these wishy-washy believers to understand that's what they were going back to. Yes, it was a covenant that God instituted, but it was also a covenant that he replaced. Yet they wanted to go back to Mount Sinai? Their desires were no different than the desires of their ancestors who created that golden calf. They wanted something they could see and touch. But if they went back, they couldn't just pick and choose what they liked about the Old Covenant. They would be subjecting themselves to all of it. They would be trading Mount Zion for Mount Sinai. Now, let, let's compare those two mountains. What was true about Mount Sinai? It couldn't be touched. It was burning with fire. It was dark and ominous. It was gloomy and stormy. Trumpet blasts were sounding the battle cry against rebellion. The voice from the mountain was terrifying, saying that if an animal even touched the mountain, it had to be stoned to death. But Mount Zion was completely different. It was 
the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of God. It was the place where thousands upon thousands of angels gathered in joyful assembly and where those who died in faith were alive with Christ. It was the place where God, the righteous judge, and his wrath had already been spent when Jesus died on the cross. And it was the place where Jesus mediated the new covenant in his blood, a blood that speaks a better word, than the blood of Abel. Now, what's that about, the blood of Abel and the blood of Jesus? What was better about Jesus' blood than Abel's? Well, Abel's blood cried out from the ground for retribution and vengeance, but Christ's blood cries out from the mountain in grace. That's the essence of Mount Zion. It was a place where men could come and receive the life-giving word of God and ultimately dwell with him forever. Given the contrast between the two mountains, there really was no choice at all. Mount Sinai spoke of law and fear, while Mount Zion spoke of life, joy, and grace. Now that's truth worth knowing, and this is truth worth living. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great day that you experience God's blessing and goodness as you let your light shine. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night as we continue our study in Colossians and then Sunday morning as we continue our study of the seeker. Have a great day.